Hi. In this video, we're going to try and understand about what do yield curves tell us? What is this concept of yield curves and what happens when bond yields start moving up or down globally? How do we perceive them? How does the equity market perceive them? And what should you do as an analyst or as an investor when you look at these yield curves moving? So to begin with this, the first thing we want to understand is what is this yield curve? The yield curve is basically a representation between the yields to maturity, which is what is the return that you will get if you invest in a particular bond and hold it to its maturity. So the yield curve's relationship is between the yield to maturity of a bond and the maturity of, of the bond by a single issuer. So if you take, for example, government of India, government of India would have issued multiple bonds, one years, two years, five years, 10 years, 30 years, depending on, you know, whatever the spectrum, hypothetically speaking, whatever is the YTM of these bonds, if you plot this on a curve, where in the on the X axis, you have the tenure and on the Y axis, you have the YTM or yield to maturities of these bonds. This representation is called the yield curve. Now, what do you mean by this, uh, by this yield curve is essentially how much return you would expect on a particular bond depending on its maturity, depending on its tenure, essentially, right? Now, usually you will see that the yield curve would be in this kind of a shape, upward sloping shape. Why is that the case? Because typically, if you give me money for one year versus if you give me money for 10 years, the risk is more in 10 years. Because the risk is more in 10 years, you would expect a higher return for a 10 year instrument. That's the simple logic. So based on that, you'll have typically yield curves that would appear like this. Remember, yield curves are, tip are only for one issuer. So you could have, let's say, argument sake, this red one could be for uh, a particular country and the blue one could be for another country. And there's a spread clearly telling you that the blue uh, yield curve has a risk premium that is built into it because people perceive or investors perceive those bonds to be riskier as compared to those bonds of the red yield curve. Now, that's the that's a representation of yield curve. What's important to understand is how does the yield curve move? Let's assume these two yield curves that you see on the screen are of the same uh, same country. They have moved here, right? So if they have moved here and you spot that the movement is parallel, like what's appearing here, that's basically yields moving across the spectrum or maturity by the same magnitude. Let's say, for example, this went up by 1%. This also went up by 1%, assuming it's the same country's yield curves that are there. There are other ways it can move. For example, you could have the yield curve like this and you could have the yield curve like this, there's a possibility that you see non-parallel moves in the yield curve, which means you could either see something like this happening where the longer maturity yields go up more than the shorter maturity yields. You could also see something like this happening, right? Where the shorter maturity yields are going up more than the longer maturity yields. Now these have relevant understandings and significance for us as analysts or investors who are looking at this data point. Let's take them one by one. When you see the first one where you see a parallel shift in the yield curve, when the yield curve goes up, this is basically signifying that the markets are expecting that interest rates are headed higher, but they're headed higher across the spectrum of the yield curve. So you're broadly saying that, okay, they're expected to go higher possibly because inflation is running high, but the growth is going to remain high. So you will maintain higher interest rates in the future as well, right? So the, it goes up by the same proportion. If the movement is something like this in the first case, where you're seeing a non-parallel shift, but the yield curves at the longer end of the curve have gone up more, which is like, let's say the 10 year yield has moved up more than the two year yield for a particular issuer. In that case, what is going to happen is that you are going to say that, okay, you know, maybe inflation is high. You expect rates to go up in the longer run, but you don't expect them to move right now because right now inflation is not a concern. Usually this situation that you see is going to be considered positive by markets like equity markets. Why? Because, you know, growth is doing well. Things are fine. Rates are going to be low in the near term. In the longer run, rates will go up, which means growth will continue in the future as well. That's what the broad expectations of the market would be in this scenario. The third one is a bit more interesting where the two year yield has gone up significantly. The 10 year hasn't moved up as much, right? This is a scenario where you're expecting that rate should go up immediately because there's a lot of inflation that is going on. 
and when you raise these rates however remember this is not a parallel shift unlike the earlier case that we saw there was a parallel shift if the markets were expecting that growth will continue in the future and hence you will need higher rates in the future as well the shift would have been parallel in this particular case because the markets see that yields have not moved uniformly across the tenures two year has gone up means you need an immediate rate hike 10 year yield has not gone up which means when you hike the rates in the near term that is going to impact the growth in the future and consequently you will not be able to keep higher rates in the future rates will go up now but they'll stay where they are you can't have higher rates in the future because growth will get impacted right this is the difference between non parallel shifts where the first case where you are seeing the two year yield not move up too much but the 10 year yield move up too much is typically called as curve steepening the second case where you see that the two year yield has moved up but the 10 year yield has not moved up is called as curve flattening flattening usually signifies that your yield curve which was sort of upward sloping has now kind of become flatter this signifies that growth in the future could come down and that could be a little bit problematic for asset asset classes like equities and all it doesn't necessarily have to behave that way but usually when bond markets are predicting something like this there is an expectation of a slowdown in the near future markets can obviously take it multiple ways now what's really happening around the world at this point of time one of the best examples at this point of time is the us yield curve that we can try and check so if you look at the us bond yields what's really happening to the us bond yield on the top of this curve you see the 10 year treasury rate and you'll see that this number has moved from something like 1.6% to about 2.5% in the span of the last 6 months right on the bottom you see the 2 year treasury yield this has moved up from 0.3% to something like 2.3% over the same time frame right so the 2 year has moved more than the 10 year this is what has happened this would ensure that there's a flattening that is playing out you can also check this flattening by a specific reference which is you can look at the 10 year yield and you can subtract the 2 year yield from that right so this will give you the spread of uh, of the 10 year 2 year yield and the more the spread the steeper the yield curve the less the spread the flatter the yield curve if this becomes negative then the yield curve would have inverted which would mean that shorter term rates are higher longer term rates will have to go lower because a recession might follow right so at this point of time that hasn't happened the 10 year yield is still higher than the 2 year yield but if it was the opposite way then the markets would have started getting a little bit worried about you know could it result in some kind of a recession let's look at this yield spread this yield spread about 6 months back was close to about 1.3% from there this has now gone to about 0.2% that clearly signifies the third move that we had seen which means inflation is high rates need to be hiked immediately in the near future and as rates are getting hiked aggressively in the near future this might start impacting growth in the long run when it impacts growth obviously rates will either not go up stay there or will have to be brought down at some point of time this does not necessarily imply a recession please be careful it does not mean that equity markets will always take this negatively it is just one of the parameters that is telling us of what the bond markets are expecting so what does this signify the bond markets are expecting at this point of time that the us will see aggressive rate hikes if the us sees aggressive rate hikes because of inflation a lot of the developed world is going to follow similarly a lot of the emerging markets will also start seeing pressure of rate hikes sooner or later once the us goes down that trajectory at this point of time the probability of rate hikes is at 95% of you know roughly about 7 to 8 rate hikes during the year taking the rates all the way up to 2 to 2.25% by the end of the year as we speak at this point of time the rates are at 0.25 to 0.5% so that's nearly about 175 basis points of rate hikes probability 95% of that this also signifies the fact that the 10 year yield is not going up as much is signifying that this would result in slowing growth due to those hikes and that will have its own set of ramifications that will come and it will obviously slow down the inflation as well at some point of time in the future it might also mean that if the slowdown or this pointed slowdown that's happening because of higher rates is more than what economists believed 
then the US Fed may actually stop hiking rates at some point of time. They may go slow at some point of time in the future. All this will come in due course of time in the future. But at this point of time, this is a very fascinating spectrum of how rates are moving. It tells us that in the short run, rates are going to be hiked aggressively. And in the long run, that might just break down the growth a little bit. We'll see how that happens and how that plays out. It's, a, it's an interesting space to kind of watch out and see what the implications are on other emerging markets and developed markets as well over the next six to eight months. That's it from me in this video. Thank you.